I'm Kelly Gunther for Seattle City Light, standing here along the Tolt Reservoir, where the city of Seattle does two things. It both collects water for the drinking water supply and generates electricity off of that stored water. But this hydro project did affect the downstream habitat of local salmon, and fixing that problem was a big challenge for the city of Seattle. Chinook salmon aren't doing as well as they used to in the Northwest, and that includes the Tolt River. Ironically enough, this huge chopper may end up helping these fish on the south fork of the Tolt. How? Well, several years ago, a group of agencies began working together to solve this salmon problem. Project coordinator Liz Ablo says that while the dam doesn't block fish because of a steep waterfall below the dam, salmon habitat was being affected. We we have an oversight group, the Tolt Fish Advisory Committee, which includes federal state agencies and the um, Tulalip tribes, as well as the City of Seattle, Seattle Public Utilities, and Seattle City Light. Two studies were commissioned to figure out what was going on. Turns out that gravel, or the lack of it, is the key issue, and salmon need gravel to spawn. What really became apparent is that um, not only was there a reduction in gravel, that was apparent, but there's a loss of trees falling into the river. And trees in the river provide key components that also tie into the gravel. One of them is that when you have trees falling in the river, you get gravel retention. Without the trees, they just route straight downstream and you just don't get these gravel bars where salmon spawn. This part of King County is very remote. No roads, not even hiking trails access the south fork of the Tolt River. You have to bushwhack your way in. So how do you get logs and other debris back into this river system? With this big Chinook helicopter, Fish Advisory Committee members, along with Seattle City Light and Seattle Public Utility crews, met up at the crack of dawn to get the job done. Two years of planning and another of preparation were finally culminating in a very big day. Chinook helicopters are not to be taken lightly. Their prop wash alone can easily knock a person down and cause injury. So a pre-flight safety meeting was held before three separate river teams bushwhacked their way through the underbrush to reach the first placement sites along the Tolts South Fork. Scott Powell coordinated the staging area, or log liftoff. Uh, we thought about just putting gravel back in the river, but we decided that without uh, the logs that uh, are typically there to retain the gravel, uh, that gravel, if we put any in, would just flow right through. But logs take some airborne muscle to fly in. Crew two, this is staging area. You want to check in? Once Powell touched base again, with the please. river teams, Group one is in position. they're ready to go. This loud, spectacular operation was set to begin. The Columbia Helicopter Company's Big Chinook can carry loads of up to 25,000 pounds. First, the helicopter started with single logs, which were slowly lifted from previously gathered piles. The claw is really a grapple, so it's kind of like a mechanical finger. What it does is it, they drop it onto the log and then they cinch it up. They use hydraulic mechanisms, grab onto the tree, and then the helicopter set off for the South Fork. The three teams along the Tolt River watched for the helicopter and then carefully guided placement of the log and other debris into the river. Not an easy task when the rotors make it hard to see much of anything. But satisfying work for these city employees who know they'll be helping salmon. Back at the log site, Roger Lansden with Columbia Helicopter is charged with helping the chopper pilot identify his next load. These later loads are the tricky ones. Lansden had to literally hook the Chinook's choker attachment to loads of smaller logs. He runs for a reason. This is dangerous work. Sometimes the pile of logs is unstable. Roger seemed like he did quite a great job. I mean, I didn't get to watch him, but the outcome on the river was pretty impressive. Meanwhile, the three river teams measure the drops and make sure they've been placed correctly. The idea here was to create our own bundles so that we could 
help facilitate this trapping of the smaller debris, which then helps create bigger backwaters around these um, log jams. That creates even better habitat for salmon. And on it goes, flight after flight, with Roger and Scott staging this aerial ballet. In fact, this job was so well coordinated, not as much helicopter time was needed, saving more than $20,000. Logs weren't the only things being placed. The Chinook also dropped containers of small boulders that are used to keep smaller trees in place during high water flows. And with each load, the toll becomes that much more salmon friendly, closing the gap between an altered river and one that's better suited to spawning. There's also some benefit for fish downstream from this hydro project. The dam uh, makes it a what we call a regulated river. So a uh, key part of our uh, role and the, the uh, agreement to operate the river is to make sure we have enough water in the river for fish. That's called our guaranteed minimum flows. But the dam uh, helps us hold back what you would otherwise see as floodwaters or peak flows. And that does have some effect on the river. It uh, slows down the, the erosion processes. It slows down the movement of wood. Uh, in some ways, it protects the reds from being scoured out from uh, flood flows during certain years. All in all, a pretty amazing way to save salmon, but possibly the only way in such a remote area. Thank you for watching. I'm Kelly Gunther bringing you this special report from your Seattle City Light.